So about time for us to get started. Uh, hope you all had a good afternoon. Uh, we'll begin, of course, with a word of prayer before we get, move into our singing. Uh, do we have any any prayer requests um, that we want, or, or prayers of Thanksgiving we want to mention tonight? Charles, we will. Sorry, give me a second to pull up the prayer list. <clears throat> Sue. Does he live nearby or does he live he elsewhere? In okay. Hmm. I was speaking with Chastity before uh, before starting, and uh, let's pray continually for her son Jake. Uh, he was in uh, last week for some tests related to the lymphoma that he's fighting, and he's had uh, ongoing autoimmune challenges as well. And she was saying they don't really have any news; they're just waiting to hear back from those things. And so, let's continue to pray for them. Um, I was talking with Nathaniel and Daisy after service, and the little boy, Nolan, who we've been praying for here, he was able to go home today. So that's really wonderful news, and um, we want to give thanks to God for that. Anyone else? Bob? Yes. Yes. Um, thank you for mentioning that. I was talking with O'Brien some. He was telling me that uh, he made it sound as though she's mostly feeling better, but it's still just kind of weak. And to play it safe, she stayed home today. I think that that's accurate. But we want to pray for for her health that she'll be back to 100% soon. <clears throat> Anyone else? All right. Well, um, if you would, let's pray and, and uh, lift these up to God. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you for the sunshine and the weather. Thank you for whatever we were able to do this afternoon. Some of us may have napped or run errands or just, just enjoyed the rest of the day, but we're grateful that we're back together tonight. Bless this time of singing and praising you and also discussion. Father, we want to lift up those uh, on our uh, hearts and minds tonight. We want to pray for our brother Charles as he's been uh, dealing with the UTI now for a while, and we just pray that you will bless him with the pain and the dif difficulty and frustration that might bring about, and uh, pray that he'll be restored to, to full health soon. Father, we want to lift up um, <clears throat> Daryl's brother, Bill. We want to pray for him as he goes in for radiation and chemo this week to fight cancer. We pray that that, uh, that, that will be effective, and we pray for his health, and we pray for his healing. We ask that you also bless him emotionally and spiritually as he goes through this. We want to continue to lift up Chastity's son, Jake. Uh, we ask that you bless him and Chastity and, and his whole family as they await results from the tests over this past week. Uh, please watch over him day by day in every respect, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, we want to lift him up. And Lord, we want to give you praise and thanks that uh, little Nolan is able to go home, that he went home today. It's a wonderful news. We've been lifting him and his family up in prayer, and we give you thanks that he's able to be home. Bless his family. Bless his health. As, they can, as his family continues to watch over him, we pray that he will continue to be in good health and continue to make progress. Lord, we also want to lift up our sister, Tanisha, uh, who's not able to be with us tonight as she's been uh, under the weather fighting uh, some type of illness. And we ask that um, you will bless her to, to be back to 100% and be able to go about her day and, and be a blessing to her family and neighbors and everyone she interacts with and the blessing she is to folks here as well. Um, we ask that she'll be feeling better soon and that you'll keep the rest of uh, the Bridges family uh, safe from illness. Bless our time again together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, our first song will be A Beautiful Life. We spoke quite a bit today about um, wanting the good of other people and not seeking to use them. And so I picked out a couple of songs that I thought go along with that. Um, this song, of course, has an echo. So... Um, men especially, please don't leave me hanging on the male part. So here we go. A beautiful life. <clears throat> Each day I'll do a golden deed by helping those who are in need. My life on earth is but a span, and so I'll do the best I can. Evening sun is 
is sinking low, a few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be no setting sun, the only life that will endure is one that's kind and good and pure, and so for God I'll take my stand, each day I'll lend a helping hand, life's evening sun, life's evening sun, is sinking low, I don't know that, I'm sorry, to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be no setting sun. I really thought I could do the, the, uh, the um, upper melody there, but I, I don't know it, so we're just going to skip the fourth verse. And go into our next song. Um, <clears throat> this next song, how many of you know I love you with the love of the Lord? No one. Okay, well, this will be a new song for tonight. Uh, really easy. Um, we sing it through the first time. I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, I see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Second time, you just change the I to we, make it plural. So I'll just sing it through, and um, then we'll go back and start over so we can all sing it together. So this is how it goes. <clears throat> I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. That's it. It's very simple. So... Let's start over with I again, and then second time we'll, we'll switch it to plural. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We see in you the glory of our King, and we love you with the love of the Lord. All right, our last song will be Sweet Hour of Prayer. <clears throat> Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for thee, sweet 
hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wing shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait the sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. May I thy consolation share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh shall drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell farewell sweet hour of prayer that i think was a different set of slides for that song because i did not recognize that fourth verse um but we made it through <clears throat> it's a beautiful song it's one of my favorites Okay, well, actually, give me just a second here. Well, as we move into our um, discussion time for uh, tonight, we talked today, of course, about the seventh commandment, the commandment not to commit adultery, and um, <clears throat> after setting some of the context for that commandment, Within, uh, within the Old Testament, within the Law of Moses, and what it would have, its significance for Israel. We then especially spent quite a bit of time on what Jesus has to say about it in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, <clears throat> a couple questions for us to, to think through tonight, and, and it's, it's really um, up to you, I suppose, how long we're here, because um, I know that, that this type of thing can be kind of hard to talk about. Sexuality can be hard to talk about. Um, and it's hard to talk about it as a holy thing. It, it's hard to even talk about it about in terms of how wonderful and good it is in the way God intends for it. And it can be hard to talk about the ways sin takes advantage of it. And so first question I have for us tonight is, why do you think that is? Why is this something that can be so hard for Christians to talk about? <laughs> Charles Sykes, because everybody's doing it. Well, there's lots of things that everybody does. And that's been true for a long time, even in the time of the New Testament. Um, among the really like elite, wealthy people of Jesus' world, it's very, very common. Anybody else? Uh, Mary, let me get the microphone. Think, um, <laughs> you know why. But I think, you know, growing up, uh, I am the older generation, but even the older generation, that was just something that you did not talk about. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that was just, I don't know what they, I guess they thought it was a big secret or something, but yeah. you never heard the older people talk about sex or anything. If you heard anything, it's, it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it, you know. Yeah. So I think that just kind of goes down from, you know, it just kind of come down from generation to generation. People that you really like to talk about it. It's like it's, it's like it's a sin when you're doing right. You know, yeah. It's like they still think it's a sin, which it shouldn't be. And besides, yeah. we need to teach our children. Yeah. You know, we, because how they know what's right and what's wrong if we don't start telling, hey, uh, you should wait until marriage to do this or whatever the case may be. You, uh, 
we do need to start talking about it, but back then they didn't and it's kind of passed on. Yeah, absolutely, it's a great point. Anybody else on why it is that this can be such a hard thing for Christians to talk about? Uh, go ahead, Ron. Uh, it's going. <laughs> well, that's something, you know, we didn't talk much about, you know, when I was growing up. Uh, now, they taught us every night that we had a class or, well, discussion every night about uh, different things, you know, either on the Old Testament or the New Testament, mm -hmm. one or the other, you know, the whole time I grew up. And, uh, but that's one of the things, though, they never did talk about uh, sexuality, uh, you know, anything like that much. And, uh, of course, back when I was a young man, I was about 20, I got married the first time. Uh, that was uh, that was a big mistake in my life. And of course, I would I I didn't live with that woman, but I guess it's about three weeks. And uh, of course, I thought she went out with another guy, you know, and committed fornication. Uh, the guy she had worked for. So that's the reason why I divorced her. And uh, but like I said, you know, there's uh, most people won't talk much about their situation, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's the way it always was with us. Yeah. Anybody else? So, so maybe a part of something that maybe touches on one aspect of what you said, in addition to Mary saying it's just something that wasn't talked about, also it can just be painful to talk about, in addition to being awkward or uncomfortable, sometimes because of what's happened in our families or what's happened to us personally, it's also painful. It brings up hard things. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, Chris. Dave, you were going to have a comment. Okay. It's such an intimate, vulnerable thing. I was thinking the same thing. It's such an intimate thing. Yeah. It's hard to talk about. I mean, it's so personal. Yeah. So if you didn't hear Chris, Chris was speaking for Daisy, who's watching online. It's just, it is such a personal, intimate thing that that just that necessarily makes it hard to talk about. I mean, anything that's really personal to us, whatever it is, if it's really personal, it's, that automatically makes it hard to talk about because it's not always easy to open up. So, uh, Jason. Uh, that's actually what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just think yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's just one of, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's just really near and dear to us it's it's very personal very intimate and it's and it's hard for people to yeah open up about those kind of things yeah well and um i think we've all we've all had good contributions here a and when i say that it can be hard for christians to talk about i don't necessarily mean to imply that it should just be abundantly easy um there's a degree to which, I mean, the way this is talked about, it should be handled so carefully and respectfully because it's so special and holy and personal and intimate. And so if that makes it a little difficult to talk about, I think that's, that's actually okay. Uh, and some of that actually goes back all the way to early chapters of Genesis with the fall. I mean, as soon as Adam and Eve eat the tree and, and realize what they've done, what happens? They're ashamed, right? And they go cover themselves, right? So some of this is just part of being human um, this side of the fall and... Um, so there's a degree to which I think we just have to embrace that and accept that. But I also want to just highlight a little bit more of one thing that Mary said. Um, I do think also that many, many Christians live with this deep sense that um, sex is like inherently dirty and that it's, it's like it remains a dirty thing, but it's just okay once you're married. And, and, and that, that is a way of thinking that I think can make it so hard for us to talk about. And of course, in reality, that's actually not a, that's actually unbiblical. It's not a biblical view of the way God created male and female and intends for marriage. Um, you know, God created this holy and good and, and wonderful, but it, it's sin that, that corrupts it. And so some of it also is that maybe a, a view that maybe no one even directly s stated that view to us that that this sex is something inherently dirty, but maybe whether someone stated it or we just kind of absorbed it through atmosphere and implication, but sometimes we operate with that view and 
um, I think God would really want us to just adopt a healthier view. Uh, Nathaniel. I, like probably most uh, Christians, was kind of given the impression, don't have sex outside of marriage or you will go to hell. Like, oh, yeah. like those are kind of the, the parameters. Wow. And what I've come to conclude in my marriage life, you know, po- post marriage is, and, and watching friends who are struggling with that kind of lifestyle is that, you know, the law of God is the law of God for a reason. And that is because he knew what was best for us. He knew that if, if you have sex outside of, of a marriage, that you were going to drag in all sorts of baggage that wasn't meant to be there. And it is hard to have a, a bond with, with one person if you're dragging around baggage from multiple other people. Mm-hmm. And so I hope to take, um, to take into conversations or to take into children of my own someday that I, I hope to teach is that don't have sex outside of marriage not because you're going to hell for it but because God knows what's best for you yeah yeah that's a great point sometimes I mean I, I remember when I was a child thinking some this way that that we can grow up almost with this impression that there's a certain list of sins that like those are the really bad sins and I remember even at one point wondering, you know, I was, I was baptized when I was very young. I was only about 10 years old. And a few years later in my life, I remember wondering, like, do I need to be baptized again? Because some of these sins are like so bad, maybe my baptism is invalid. And just a little thinking, a little conversation with people who are spiritually wiser than you, you know, can help us see like that. That is not the case. You know, there is not a, a laundry list of sins that like these are the ones that will send you hell and these others will not. Uh, it's that in Christ. You know, there's grace that's a, that can cleanse all sin. Um, so, so that can be something else that maybe we can, we can pick up along the way if we're not careful growing up. And, and that's something to, uh, that's another view that maybe could use some tweaking. And, and I think you make a great point, Nathaniel, that instead of saying don't do this because something will happen, it can be, it, it can be much healthier to say here's God's plan and there, there are good reasons for it. It's not just... Um, an arbitrary rule, and you'll be severely punished otherwise, it, there are good reasons for why God has set in place the plan that he has. Well, oh, Luann. Yeah, I have a question. Just for a minute here. I remember once talking to mom, she said, you didn't say bull, you said man cow. <laughs> That's kind of how she grew up. Uh-huh. But, but I think keeping, and I've been thinking about it lately, keeping Christians in the dark about sexuality I don't think it's fair. I mean, when you, if you, if you're not tainting someone, but you're really trying to prepare them for the real world. Yeah. When you remain, I just think, God, I was so innocent and naive when I was young. And I think when you're too innocent and too naive as an adult, sometimes you walk into traps mm-hmm. that you don't see and nobody prepared you for other than don't do this or don't do that, but you're in a trap, but you don't know how to handle the situations because you don't know who you are and when mm. you're young. And those hormones can rage pretty pretty strong sometimes. Yeah. Great point. And just some guidance on how to deal with it and what to expect mm-hmm. and maybe how to deal with certain situations because the world's certainly not going to give you the support. That's what I was thinking with what you were saying is you said it's not good to stay in, to keep people in the dark on this and and the reality is no one will stay in the dark entirely like someone will shine light on it and do you want it to be followers of Jesus or do you want it to be the world you know so they're going to learn it from somewhere and they may as well learn from followers of Christ did did I interrupt you I I I just started to think about all the the hoopla across the country pulling books and stuff that are and I understand that parents are concerned don't want their children exposed to certain things but I think sometimes you have to allow them to be exposed and be willing to talk to them about it, mm. why it's not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'll let thank you. Uh, go ahead, Jason. 
Well, just, I, you know, I was going to say, like, there, there's, uh, I mean, you, you, you were talking about when you were younger and having this, like, laundry list of sins maybe that you, you know, sometimes I think we, I think we still do that, yeah. right? And there are probably other, there are other things, other other sins that, that a lot of us may have grown up like never knowing existed, right? So, you know, my family, you know, my mom wouldn't, she wouldn't even talk about alcohol, right? Her, her preference, her wish is that, you know, me and, and my siblings never knew that it, it, we never encountered it, right? And that's not, that has, there's a negative side of that too, right? Because when you do see it or experience it or be around it, you don't, it's, it, you don't know how to react because you, you, you don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, so there's, there, I think there's a lot of like, and, and you could just apply this to so many things, right? I mean, the, the, you know, the drugs and substance abuse, um, you know, mental health and, and some of the, you know, issues that kids face today, social media issues, right? Um, how, you know, sexuality is exposed on social media and how do you, so, I mean, we honestly kind of try to just talk about it um, and, and not, you know, not put on the, the, the not, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to say that, but but not really indicate that one's any worse than the other, right? We, we often think that, but just that, hey, let's just handle all of these things and these sexual issues are, are just no better, no worse than, than the substance abuse issues or, you know, the, the bullying issues and, and all those kind of things. Yeah. So mm. there's a lot out there that, that people face and it's hard for us sometimes as adults to figure out how to handle that. Yeah, but. absolutely. Well, and that sounds very similar to what Luann was saying mm -hmm. about confronting these things as they come along. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jason, for... Yeah. And I was listening to Luann. I mean, I know we're talking about different things, too, when you mentioned the books. You know, now every state want to pull certain books out, you know, out, you know, out of school they, because they don't want, you know, the kids to learn about it. I think that is, that's just me now. I think that is so wrong. I think leave those books. Now, it's up to the parents whether they want their child to, to read this because you're going to learn it somewhere. Like he was saying, you're going to learn what's going on eventually. And it's good to learn it from your parents if they can teach you. And if, if they know what the teachers are teaching in these schools and stuff, hey, all you do is go in the classroom, sit and watch them, you know, and listen to them. But that would help a child rather than pulling all these books. We don't want you to know. We don't want you to know what happened back in 1900. You know. It's, that's bad. They need to know. Because that way they won't make the same mistakes. Mm. So, I mean, I, I, mean I, can't, I can't get over things. You know, people don't want to talk about a lot of stuff, but we need to open up and talk about some of this stuff because it's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt, you know, it's already hurting us. It's going to hurt the younger children, the generation who come, too. Mm. Uh, Sue and then Nathaniel. I think now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the books, some of the books that they're talking about <clears throat> is because the books are saying it's okay. It's actually influencing young generation to do the things that are wrong. And I know I went to class when Eric and Kelly was in, I think it was a fifth and sixth grade. And they brought in a so-called sex expert, the state, now she worked for the state, brought her in to teach mm -hmm. sex education to the class, to those kids. Mm -hmm. I went down and sat in the class. I did not like it. I went to the principal. I also went to the PTA meeting because what she was saying, it, it was against everything that a Christian would be teaching their children. And I think that's the problems, the things that are in books. Sure, I think our children should be taught these things are out there, but don't influence them to believe it's okay. Yeah, yeah. The, I think that, so when, we, when we're speaking generically about books, we need to make sure we know exactly what kind of books we're talking about before we're 
interesting about whether they should be pulled or not. And I know also that gets into a political thing, which I don't really want us to get too, too off on that tonight. But um, you're right that, so I went to a Christian uh, like middle school and I was grateful that when they did like sex education, they brought in people who advocated from a Christian perspective. But there are lots of folks who will not get that, you know, and, and even what it looks like now, I imagine, is quite a bit different than even when it was like 10 years ago. So and that's all stuff I don't know about because I wasn't in those, that environment. So it, well, it's a this, rapidly changing world in that in What that this area. lady yeah. was teaching uh, is, well, almost what they're <laughs> telling you today. Uh, and the kids could ask any question they wanted, and she would tell them. She would explain exactly what they were asking about, mm -hmm. which for some kids, the things they asked, they had no business knowing mm -hmm. at that age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of that's just, it's going on again. And I think our kids should be taught that they should not be influenced, that it's okay to do it. Yeah, well, and you know, I, I understand. Again, I'm getting off into education is, is a little off in the weeds for, for me, but I know that school systems have a reason for why they do what they do. But I think we would all agree that ideally this stuff should be taught from the home at, at, at the beginning. I mean, that's, especially as followers of Jesus. I mean, again, if, if they're going to learn about it somewhere, including the school system, and the place where you want them to learn about it first is by parents who are committed followers of Christ. Uh, Nathaniel. Yeah, kind of, I kind of already had the same thought that Sue did, but just to go a little bit further, the books that are being talked about right now are not educational. The books that are being talked about right now are, are a literotic version of what you would see in a Hollywood movie that you would not take your children to. I mean, we're talking about things that I, I would not even say here because it would make everyone blush, and those are not words that should be spoken, you know, by a Christian. They're, they're words that, you know, are strung together by, by people who are in a deep hole of, of sexual sin. And so I just want to be very clear with anyone here who disagrees with pulling books out of schools read them yourself decide for yourself do you want your children or do you want the children reading that at a fourth grade level you know i mean a, a child who's 10 or 11 years old does not need to be reading x-rated material and and i i will go to bat and i will vote and i will i will preach and i will do what needs to be done but we do not need that opening a world of sin in our schools. Yeah. And, and so this kind of goes back to, again, we need to make sure we know what kind of books we're talking about before we talk about I'm in favor of keeping them or pulling them, because not all books are going to be created equal, right? Uh, Mary? That's what I was going to say. Now, I yeah. agree with you there. It's definitely fourth grade. But there are some books that are pulling that need to be talked. But I agree with you, because there are things, I'm sure, I mean, I don't read a lot of books. I'm sure there's a lot out there that I wouldn't want my kids to learn, you know, but if, if they were small. But some of them, they need to keep there. They need to keep there. Yeah. I won't go into detail about which one, but some of them need to stay. I'm trying to decide how to say this. I do agree the child should be taught. Let's go back. Let's start all over. We all have a responsibility as parents, as teachers, we need to know what to teach our children and when to teach those children. If we don't teach those children, they're going to learn it from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if they don't learn it from the school system, they don't see it on TV or where they want to see it, they're going to learn it from the world. The world's going to teach them how to do whatever they want to do. Now, what does the world have to offer? Pain, sickness, embarrassments. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this Sunday morning in the class. So the world doesn't have anything to offer but painfulness and sorrow and regret. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the bottom line is we all have a responsibility to teach our children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Um, <clears throat> so I've prepared three questions. It's 535. I'm going to skip the second one. 
and come back to it if needed. Because I do want to get to the third one, but I'll come back to the second one if we need to. So um, moving on to our next question, what Jesus talks about in Matthew 5 when he talks about you know, his remarks on do not commit adultery and he talks about adultery in the heart and these types of things. Um, this, is, this is something that is a little unique in that pretty much everyone's going to wrestle with it. You know, not everyone is going to wrestle with the temptation to steal, which we talked about last week. Not everyone's going to wrestle too much with the temptation to, I don't know, um, give me another one. But, you know, there's, not everyone's going to wrestle with every kind of temptation, but this is one that pretty much everyone is going to wrestle with for at least a stretch of their lives, right? Uh, if not their whole life. Everyone is going to wrestle with the temptation to sexual sin and, and lust and et cetera. Um, and so because this is something that is just pretty much universal to human beings, um, what can help us resist this temptation? What can help us resist, first of all, the, the temptation more broadly beyond sexual sin to, uh, to use people rather than seek their good? Because lust is an expression of using people, right? What can help us learn how to, to seek the good of others rather than use them, and especially how that applies to sexual sin? What, what can help us resist this temptation? Ron says, take the way of escape. Pray. Pray, yeah. Uh, you know, when I was young, and uh, that smoking too, you know, that's a, that's a bad thing. I know it was the worst thing i ever seen for me to get off uh, tobacco. Mm. Uh, we used to raise tobacco down there when I grew up. And most of all the people down there, even church members, they smoked, you know. And quick as they'd go outside, they'd light up. And I guess most of them smoked down there, you know, when when I was a young fella. And uh, I never quit vaping until 2019 uh, when I was working over here at uh, Culver's. And I finally said, I'm going to give that up too. I was down to 3% nicotine. And uh, I said, I'm going to give that up. So I laid that vape stick right there beside him in the car. <laughs> but it's, it still took uh, two months mm. to give that up. Mm. And uh, I feel for people that are uh, smoking and trying to quit. sharing that, Ron. Uh, that is truly, truly a hard battle. And, and it speaks to other kinds of addictions as well, including sexual ones that, yeah, it can be extraordinarily hard to quit. Thank you for sharing. Sue? Uh, <clears throat> I think with the sexual immoral, uh, it's, that is a sin against one's own body. Yeah, Paul talks about that. Mm -hmm. um, and all through your life then, there's going to be moments, there's going to be different things that can happen that's going to bring that sin back to your memory. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going to suffer more than what you think mm -hmm. because each time it brings it back, you realize how wrong. Yeah. I've, I've done that. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. And it's, you'll, it's just something you'll never forget. And to think that it's things like that that help put Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. That's where it hurts. But at the same time, it's good to know that he forgives you. Mm -hmm. Amen. But at the same time, he forgives. I know he's forgiven me. But the thought, the memory, there's just things come at all different times. I mean, it could be a picture you see. It could be a song. Yeah. It can be all kinds of things. It's going to bring that memory back. And it hurts. We are weak in certain areas, going back to Ron again, but God has always made a way of escape. So if we are weak in that area, don't go around that. Yeah. If we are weak in smoking, drinking, and whatever it is, don't hang out with those guys. Um, so the bottom line is this. 
God has always made a way of escape. Put it, put it away. Don't, don't think about it. I know it's easy for me to say because I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't run, I don't chase cars, stuff like that. But uh, the bottom line is we have to uh, be careful because my temptation could be worse than your temptation or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. It comes down right down to it. Sin is sin. Yeah. So no good sin, no good sin. Just sin is sin. Yes. And we need to remember that because sometimes if we hear that someone else is struggling with a certain sin, we kind of think, oh, wow, it's that sin, yeah. you know, and that can lead to shame and make it, how are we even going to reach out to a person like that if we're too busy judging them, you know? So, yeah, that, that's very important to remember. Uh, Ron, again. Well, if you're, if you're committing sin, and, and I think smoking is sin, if you're doing that, well, how are you going to talk to somebody about your soul mm. and try to get them to convince to be a Christian? You know, mm. and I thought about that. You know, a lot of times I thought, well, you know, I can't talk to somebody else about what they're doing if they're doing wrong, or if they're not a Christian. And when I'm doing this, you know, mm. so I'd be wasting my time, or they'd be making fun of me and saying, "Look at you, you know, what are you, what are you doing that for?" Mm. You know. Yeah, that can be good additional motivation, right? Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, Nathaniel. I read a book uh, last year. Um, it's called The Easy Way to Control Alcohol. Mm. And <laughs> you guys may laugh at that because there is no easy way to control alcohol <laughs> addiction. Um, but what this guy did, who, he's a doctor. He's written several books, one on how to quit nicotine, one on how to quit caffeine. Um, you know, he's got several in that series. And the way he the way he approached it is just by calling it out for what it is. Um, alcohol, just like just like sexual addictions, is a trap. It's only there to harm you, and it disguises itself so well that you don't even realize you're in a trap. Mm -hmm. And so I think a, a great way to help um, control this, what we're talking about tonight, is to just call it out for what it is. It's a horrible illness, disease, um, trap, mm -hmm. and the further down that hole you go, the worse it'll become. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Luann. With any, I don't want to call it addiction, anything that we don't have self-control, which is one of the fruits of the spirit, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. maintaining self-control. Mm -hmm. And if we don't learn that growing up, how to resist things like simple things, you know, not ruining your appetite on something that, you know, candy and stuff, <laughs> but being yeah. able to wait, you know, I think yeah. there was an experiment where kids you know, they gave them candy and they told them to wait and one waited and one didn't and how that impacted, how they led, you know, that personality trait led throughout their life. Yeah. Um, but self-control, I mean, that goes with anything. But sexuality is one thing that I don't know that people really talk that in the world mm -hmm. is self-control. Mm. Yeah, self-control... You were mentioning like other ways to learn it, even from a young age, can bear tremendous fruit later, later in life uh, for all kinds of things, including this. Yeah. And the idea of delayed gratification, you know, being right. willing to just forego an immediate enjoyable thing, knowing that there's something better if you wait, you know, and that can apply to, of course, waiting until, until marriage for, for sexuality. And also, even for someone who perhaps is never going to get married or, or whatever, uh, delayed gratification, I, instead of feeding that immediate desire, enduring for the greater desires of what God has to offer through Jesus, right? So that idea of delayed gratification works in multiple ways. Any other thoughts on what can help us resist this temptation? Well, I, I've jotted down a couple, and Bob kind of already said one about just knowing your weaknesses in advance 
uh, not putting yourself in situations where you know you're going to be especially weak or tempted. Um, so I won't really elaborate on that one. Uh, but one other that I thought about, going back to the bigger, like un underlying problem of, of using people for benefit versus seeking their greatest good. And we always want to lean, obviously, we always want to move towards seeking their greatest good. Um, allowing ourselves first to be more receptive of God's love. I really believe that it is essential to really knowing how to love others in general, and, and especially, of course, when we're talking about sexuality, but just in general, how to seek the good of others. We first, I think, need to know what it means to be loved that way, to, to be loved by someone who consistently seeks nothing but our greatest good, and, and God is the one who does that. Uh, and so maybe praying to God to help us learn how to be loved will then help us how to love all people um, in the way that he calls us to. That's, that's one other thing I thought about. Well, thank you all. I know that this is a, it's a difficult topic. You know, it was difficult to prepare and preach on, and it's difficult to discuss. So I want to thank you all for opening up and being willing to talk. I think this has been a really beneficial thing, a blessing for us. I hope you feel the same way. Uh, any other thoughts or reflections before we wrap up and dismiss tonight? Yeah, well, that, that's a good point. Is Yeah, a lot of the laws had, had death penalty attached to them. We talked about that some with honoring father and mother a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel. Uh, Daisy just chimed in. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Say that again if you don't uh, mind. Daisy just chimed in and said, we need to keep each other accountable. And she kind of left it at that. I assume she means as, as a church. We need to keep each yeah. other accountable. And I just wanted to say I've heard a lot of people here tonight open up that I've never heard before utter the word sex. And uh, now that I know you guys can, <laughs> maybe we need to uh, maybe we need to be more open and honest with each other. And maybe we need to talk about this in a in a more vulnerable setting. Yeah, great point. And I want to thank Daisy for saying that because sometimes we can assume without without thinking about it that whatever temptation it is, including this one, like we need to go it alone. And we're just not meant to do that. You know, we're meant to draw on the strength of each other. So it's important to maybe be in prayer about ways to make that happen, whether it's pulling aside someone you feel comfortable talking with or, or whatever, but ways to make sure you're not going it alone and that there are brothers and sisters in Christ who are in it with you. Uh, Luann. I think in our culture, and probably many others, there's such an emphasis. You can't get away from it. The emphasis yeah. when you watch TV, I mean, that's all people a lot of times focus on in, yeah. in the media and things, you know, sexuality and, and whether people have hooked up or not. That yeah. seems to be the main focus yeah. instead of focusing on just being kind and human mm -hmm. Absolutely. in day to day. But Yeah, it is, it is such a, a big focus, which is why it's so important that we have a biblical uh, understanding of this, because without it, without it, all we can do is tell others, you're not supposed to do that. And, and when the world is saturating you with this message, that becomes harder and harder. But when there's a clear biblical vision for God's intentions for sexuality, I think it becomes easier to confront the world's presentation of this stuff. That's my thoughts on it. Go well, ahead. I don't think the world understands it's okay to be celibate. Yeah, that's also true. They think there's something wrong with you if you're yeah. otherwise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be a choice. Mm -hmm. You're right. And that's something else scripture talks about quite openly. Yeah. Any other final thoughts or observations? Thank you, everyone, for a great discussion tonight. Um, next week here, we will have a singing night. So we'll take a break from our, our normal procedure of either discussion or more Bible study. And we'll have a, a night of singing with maybe a brief devotional message as part of it. Also, let me just say again, in case you forgot, uh, because I know that there's some time between the announcements 
and when we dismiss. So let me just remind you in case you forgot, over on the bulletin board on the way out are these little pictures of things that are needed for our disaster relief ministry. Um, so here, here's one, and there's a whole bunch like it uh, hanging down at the bottom of the board. I encourage you to take one and uh, bring said item, with whatever it is that you pull off, bring, bring it back to church in the near future because that will be a blessing to our disaster relief ministry. Bob? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let me get the microphone up to you. It's coming up. And I would like to say also thanks, Daisy, for chiming in. I'm coming from James, the first chapter, verses, 15, verses 14 and 15. But every man is tempted. When he is tempted, when he is drawn away of his evil lust and enticed, verse 15, then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin which is finished bringeth forth death, which is separation from God. Mm -hmm. Just some closing thoughts. Yeah. And I might also want to throw in uh, verse 17, or 16 and 17. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. I think, yeah, taking that whole passage together, that's a good passage to end on. Yeah, thank you for sharing. All right, well, if there's nothing else, then let's uh, bow and uh, be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this time tonight. Thank you that we can be together and discuss more about what Jesus teaches us regarding uh, sexual health and purity and what the, the seventh commandment teaches as well. Uh, Father, we ask that you bless us as we go from here uh, to truly seek to live a holy life in every, every aspect of life. Uh, we ask that you will help us to be honest with each other about our shortcomings and struggles, uh, that you will help us to know your love and that you will teach us how to replicate that love out in the world, how to love others selflessly rather than use them. And, and we know that when when that touches on sexuality, this can be such a difficult thing um, to resist and fight and overcome. We ask that you equip us, give us strength, be merciful and gracious to us, and uh, teach us continually over the, the journey of our lives. Teach us to grow more and more into the holy people you call us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.